So today we're going to be doing an open reduction internal fixation of a clavicle fracture um, along with a coracoclavicular ligament disruption. This particular specimen has really great bony landmarks, but I generally try to cheat my incision a little bit inferior in order to gain better access to the coracoid. The coracoid process is just below. You can see the level of mobility here because of the simulated disruption of the coracoclavicular ligaments. And this is our fracture site. We've used a modified, what I call a modified compression clamp, where I've straightened the tines out of a reduction forceps or a towel clip and made two pilot holes. And I've just been careful to uh, keep it out of the way of where I'm going to place my fixation. I've chosen a uh, superior distal clavicle plate. There's a cluster of screws at the distal end of the plate that accommodate 2.7 millimeter screws. The proximal portion of the plate, the oblong holes, will accommodate a distal clavicle tightrope. So we'll start off with a bicortical screw. And I've measured from the drill, so I'm going to ask for an 18. We can also take this off and use a standard depth gauge. And again, I'll take an 18. We'll use a non-locking screw first in order to bring the plate up against the bone. Okay, so now when we have provisionally fixed the distal side, depending on the amount of comminution, depending on the uh, quality of the bone, one may want at this point to gain additional points of fixation before I use the uh, medial oblong holes for compression. We elected to start off with three points of fixation in order to really anchor the distal portion of our clavicle plate down. Now, at this point, I'll generally move to the proximal portion of the plate. One important thing to keep in mind is that I want to actively compress at the fracture site in order to achieve healing. And so I'm going to drill eccentrically. So what we'll do here is we'll get right up against the plate until I feel a little bit of tension a little bit of pushback on the plate, and then we're going to take the BB tack out and allow the plate to compress the fracture. And so in situations where you have really good bone quality or very good bony apposition, and you want to compress for a second time or compress further, you can bring a second screw up against the plate here. And once you get to the level of the oblong hole, you loosen this one. Now the compression that you've already achieved is not going to recoil because this screw is already holding it in that position. All it's going to do now is it's going to compress the fracture further. Distally I uh, fill the rest of the holes in the distal fragment uh, with uh, two seven locking screws. You'll also notice that the central screw that I had originally used, a cortical screw, I changed out to a locking screw. What we're going to do basically is place this pin through the hole in the plate down into the coracoid process, essentially judging the, a central location based on the position of my homens. From time to time we will take a confirmatory x-ray and basically I want to see that my guide pin is aiming towards the center of the coracoid. And you can see very subtly that I just barely advanced through a couple of millimeters right in the center of the coracoid. The, the angle of the image makes a big difference too. You really want to get a good circular uh, shot of the coracoid in order to know that you're down the center. The ideal position would be right there, just past the button, past the bone, uh, but no further. So we're first going to remove the safety tab. I've loosened this. I'm going to remove the button and pull up. So what I will do is take the two limbs from each hole that, that are coming from each hole in the button and just kind of give it a little sequential side to side pull and then take an x-ray. The option of a knotless tightrope is really useful in this particular part of the body being that the clavicle is such a subcutaneous structure not having the prominence of a knot is very helpful. 